Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey, and you are here. You're checking it out. This is WCR Nation, and I want to thank you for coming by. Uh, if it's your first time here, thanks for checking us out. Like I said, I'm Jersey. Nice to meet you. Take a look around. Hopefully you like what you see, or at least it's not the worst thing you've ever seen, and you go back and watch the other episodes. Now this show, podcast, comes out every single week. This is like episode 50 in the 50s every week it comes out on friday so you got tons of stuff to catch up on go do that but right now click the thumbs up let me know that you watch and i uh, definitely appreciate that if you're listening via uh, itunes or google play or any of the other soundcloud tune in all those things thank you uh, i really do appreciate all of the podcast listeners you guys just keep growing and growing and growing and you listen every single week so that's super huge i really appreciate that um, if you are one of the nation, if you're some one of the cool kids, somebody who makes sure to thumbs up our YouTube video, you listen to the podcast or watch the YouTube video every single week, you comment, you subscribe, and all the other cliche crap that people say on YouTube, what is going on? It's because of you I get to do this show. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, if you are the last here, the most elite of elites, if you're one of the cool kids who does all that stuff I just said, and... You buy your supplies through me, any supplies, big or little, it doesn't matter. You, my friend, are the reason that I had a steak for dinner two weeks ago. I'm just saying, I don't want to brag, things are pretty good. I really do appreciate it. Uh, it was from Aldi's, I don't know if you have those by you, it was delicious, it was amazing. No, uh, thank you, seriously, I really do appreciate it. And if you want to buy your supplies through me, my number is 862 312 two zero two six text me anytime let me know you have everything in your cart shop overnight uh say hey jersey put it in and i'll put it in and i appreciate it. that's how i make my credit that's like a virtual high five of awesomeness so thank you thank you thank you now few people i want to thank are just some shout outs this week uh jacob dennis what's going on mr kurt zelder <sighs> What's going on, man? Uh, I appreciate everything you guys do. And Toby Flathers, the longtime OG Toby. What's going on, man? Listening from episode one. What's going on? I love hearing that. By the way, if you listen or watch a show and you just want to be like, hey, what? I'm just going to say thanks. Shoot me a text at that 862-312-2026 number and just say you watch a show. Tell me where you're at. I just love to hear it. Literally the best part of my week is hearing from everybody who watches or listens to the show. So thanks very, very much. Um, the winner this week, I pulled it up. Now, somebody one time said that we don't do we don't do uh, random. We just pick our favorite people. This is one of my favorite people, but it was randomly picked. It's Mr. Peter Artusa. Peter, what's going on, man? You won. And that was a $50 credit for Window Cleaning Resource and the Swag Bag Man. All you got to do is email me, josh at Window Cleaning Resource. Just email me your info, and I will shoot that out to you. Thanks, everybody. Okay, so first off, I just got done doing a live. Hopefully, you got a chance to check it out. If not, go to uh, Window Cleaning Resource. Go to their um, Facebook uh, page. It's on there with Josh Latimer. I did the live. Josh is a super cool dude. Quick time podcast, blah, blah, blah. He's going to be there. So I'm jazzed about the huge convention now. I know you guys are getting sick of me saying this, but the huge convention is coming up August 23rd and 24th. The Service Software Summit is before. I always mess that up. Service Software Summit is the day before, and that's put on by Kurt Kempton. That is amazing. If you have any need for software or just want to see or hear what these people have to offer, specific software for your industry, go to that also. It's three days. You can just learn everything that you want. The Service Software Summit is actually going to be like a TED Talk, if you know what that is. Uh, kind of back and forth, uh, 13 minutes, two minutes off. So everybody talks for a really quick time. It keeps your attention. It's awesome. I'm very excited. It's the first year for that. Super excited for that. So... Other than that, I'm just excited. I'm excited to say what's up to all you peeps and give you high fives. And I really love hearing it. Uh, if you see me there, say what's up. Uh, tell me you watch the show. I just love it. I love it. I love it so much. I, I I look forward to You know because I start talking about it so stinking early. 
but I dig it. If you haven't been to one, go to one, blah, blah, blah. Tickets are selling up fast, blah, blah, blah. Prices are going up. Room block is going away and all that other fun stuff. There's a lot of other classes. Go to thehugeconvention.com and I'm done talking about it. Uh, I had someone one time uh, said, uh, complained on YouTube that I talk too much before the actual show. So I talk too much in general. So sorry. But anyway, what's up guys and gals? I really do appreciate you guys being here. So today we are going to talk about destroying your business, like ways to ruin your business. Now I was going to do a like five ways to kind of blah, blah, blah. But Luke, the window cleaner, if you haven't checked out his stuff, it's absolutely amazing. Go check that out. Everybody knows who Luke is. Luke just did a five, uh, five, uh, video just recently. So I'm not going to one up him by doing a six or a five. I'm going to do four. I, I really didn't count, but that Either way, here they are. These are some of the things. Now, if we have a business that's completely established, which you do, even if you're new, you have something, right? That baby, that infant, that thing. If you have 10 employees, you have a thing. That thing is running upwards. You're always achieving better and bigger things every single year. But you can jack all of that up really, really quick and just ruin a a company so absolutely quick by some of these things. We've all seen it. We've seen it not even in our industry, but other companies that just like let themselves go and you go in there and you're like, that's gross. Uh, That place is garbage. It's not what it used to be. It's not what it used to be. And uh, what happens is the place eventually, everybody catches on that it's not what it used to be. It's garbage. Nobody wants it. And even if it was the best place ever, it's gone. In my hometown, I had a place that was a prime rib. They were a prime rib place. It was like... If you went on a date or if I took my wife out to like our anniversary kind of, that's where we went. And uh, yeah, they they switched owners. The son took it over and just ran it completely into the ground. It's garbage and uh, they'll be closing their doors soon. And it's amazing to see the journey from epic to garbage, how quickly that goes. So here are some things that do not do because it will ruin your business. And as always, I want to hear down in comments uh, what things you think could ruin a business quickly. I'd love to hear it. Uh, This is a conversation, so let's open it up. But first and foremost, the biggest one that we have to kind of fight against as contractors is swindling customers because... We are contractors, right? Everybody's heard of that, like, I paid my kitchen remodeler 10 grand and he never showed back up. So people instantly think that we are going to rip them off. So not ripping them off is always a good thing to do, right? It really, really is. So um, here's a couple things in this category that, I mean, you could go anywhere. Let's just, if you make somebody feel like they're getting swindled, they're getting swindled and they they're instantly already thinking that now if you've had somebody as a customer for years and years maybe it's harder to do that with those but the new people they're instantly thinking about it right away right and here's a few of them the first no-no in the don't swindle your customers is changing the price now before you go and start typing away at that email and telling me how horribly stupid i am for saying that hear me out now when i got to a job um Every single time, I would put it out there when I did an estimate and say, hey, so your price is going to be X. Now, if we get there and there's any type of change, we'll make sure to tell you right away before we start any work. Now, if you do that or say that or give an estimate, when you get there, especially with a product like Responsibid, if you have that, I always would put that this is a generalized and super specific um, pricing, but the price is subject to change. We'll let you know before any work is started. Now, that's not different. When you get there and you go, okay, this lady said she had 10 windows and there's 382 windows. Obviously, you're not going to do that job for what you quoted. But letting them know beforehand is huge. And here's a trick. If you go there, and I've done this before, where people put into response a bit or whatever, and they're counting up their windows. They'll put in that they have 20 windows. You get there and there's like 34 windows. You don't even know how they counted it because they sat in one room and went, uh, I think there's three in the bedroom and... Here's what you do. If you quoted them $200 or whatever for even numbers, if you go to them and say, hey, so we quoted you at $200, you had 24 windows on there, but you actually have 38 windows. 
Um, we can either do the 38 with here's the new price, or you can go ahead and pick out the 24 windows, any windows in your house, and we'll go ahead and do those. Um, that way, you're not actually increasing the price. Um, you're actually giving them the option to keep it the same or to get all of their windows done. So if you do that, you're not really raising the price. You're not pulling the rug out from under them with price. You're explaining to them that the price can change. So that is the big one. Now, people will expect when you get there, if they think they're getting swindled because of a price thing, there's very, very hard to get it back because if they get it in their brain that you're swindling them, you've already lost. So especially with price, kind of take that uh, with a grain of salt. Some people will say also taking a deposit makes people automatically assume that they're swindling. I never took a deposit, but it's very, very popular to take a deposit. Um, so that one's up in the air. If you got comments on that, uh, let me know. Uh, the second big one under the do not swindle your customers or you will ruin your business category is not disclosing issues. Now, here's the big thing, and I just had a talk. I wish I remembered who it was. Uh, like 45 minute talk just yesterday about exactly this. Now, if you get to a house and say uh, you're walking around and you knock over a plant or you break a pot outside, now things happen. We've all broken windows, we've all broken that uh, weird tchotchke thing that was on the shelf that we didn't see, or the pole hit, or one of the guys did, or whatever, right? We've all done it. But if you go, to them and say, hey, I am so absolutely sorry, Mrs. Jones. Uh, we were outside and as I was walking around the building looking up at your windows, I accidentally kicked the pot over and I broke it. I'm going to be absolutely happy to replace this pot. I just want to know uh, if you remember where you may have gotten it from. Now, putting that out there, people usually, now depending on what it is, now if, if you did break you know, an antique vase or something, usually people aren't like, oh, that's okay. I didn't like that antique vase anyway, right? But what they'll do is with a pot, they'll say, oh, don't worry about it. I've had that thing forever. Uh, it's not something to worry about, you know, whatever. But they're not angry about it. Why? Because you've already explained it to them that that happened. Um, if you don't explain it to them and they see that the pot's broken, oh man, you're going to get a phone call, right? Everybody knows exactly what's going to happen. They're calling up going, hey, you broke my pot. That was a $3,500 pot I was putting flowers in. They're going to be super pissed because they think that you tried to scan, they pull the wool over their eyes. You tried to swindle them by not telling them that it happened, right? So anything that happens, you're going to break a window at some point, especially if you have storms or triple tracks or any of that stuff, you're going to have issues. If you let them know that it happened, they're not as mad at you. Right? They're usually pretty understanding. I've had people before. I had a guy break a perfume bottle. Allegedly, it was like the grandmother's handed down, whatever. It was just a perfume bottle. It was newer. It wasn't what the lady said. But, of course, we go, oh, I'm so sorry about that. And she says, oh, it cost $400. I bet you that thing's worth it. Okay, well, we'll definitely take $400 off the bill. That particular job we did for free. I don't want to talk about it. But it happens, right? It happens. So disclose it and they don't have an opportunity to be mad about it now uh this is the big one that i wanted to touch on is stealing this sounds so stupid but stealing doesn't mean taking a watch it doesn't mean taking the tv off the wall stealing means taking anything that's not yours now what if you're in the the, the garage you're doing this first time clean there's a rag sitting there you're like oh i'll just take that you know we could use that or a razor or a, uh you find an old squeegee down in the bush or something if it's not yours, don't take it. Why? Because if they see that you took it, or if it was their kids, or if they knew it was there, or whatever, they go, that window cleaner took that. Guess what? You've instantly stolen a bunch of other stuff. That's how that goes. Is that if you have stolen one thing, you've stolen a bunch of things. That's, that's, that's just how it goes. So do not take anything that doesn't belong to you. I know it sounds stupid and we shouldn't have to say it, but make sure you guys don't take anything either. If, if, if it's no matter how dumb it is, it will translate to how they see you more than what it was that was stolen. Now, if you steal their car or their VCR, which they don't have VCRs anymore, but if you did take that, uh, then obviously you're a dirtbag and you should probably not be in business going in people's houses. Yes, if you steal 
you're a dirtbag. I'm sorry, but I have a sore spot in my uh, heart for people who are thieves. Don't be a thief. But anyway, overall, just don't swindle or don't allow them to think that you swindle them or don't think let them think that you pulled the wool over their eyes. It's just not good because guess what? They'll never use you again and they'll tell everybody, those shady guys, I didn't like... As soon as it's implied, it is real. Like, Michael Jackson. What did Michael Jackson do? There's things that everybody thinks he did, but he didn't really do. I mean, it was never proven, right? But we all assume it because it was elegant. You get it. Okay. Number two, second category, is (laughs) is being gross. It's being gross. I'm sorry. You people out there... You know, if it's not you, it may be one of your guys. I I know this oh too well. I'm one of my guys. and um, But anyway, don't be gross. And here's the reason. I've gotten jobs, and I've gotten probably probably maybe $50,000 worth of work in the lifetime, I bet. I bet that's a very fair assumption for these jobs I'm thinking. That people have told me they fired the last guy because he was gross. Now, I had a guy... Uh, where I got a contract, and it was like, um, it was like 20, uh, don't mind that, it was like $2,500, uh, and it was quarterly, this is one of them, and it was the guy creeped out the women that were at the place, because he apparently was an oogler, he looked at them, uh, creepily, I guess, if that's a word, so we got the account, boom, awesome, I'm not gonna stare at any of you, right? The second one that I can think of was a very, very big project for us. Uh, It was because the guy stunk. The guy smelled so bad of cigarettes when they came back in because they took smoke breaks every 10 minutes. I think every time they did drops or however it worked. Either way, they smelled so gross that they requested them never, ever come back. So they changed contractors altogether. So don't be gross. But here are the categories in the gross one not to be. And first and foremost is stinky. Now, we can all get stinky. I get that. This is the weirdest episode we've done yet. But you could get stinky. I get that. But here's the thing. If you're um, a sweaty guy uh, or girl or whatever, bring a change of shirt if you know it's going to happen. Man, it's like 96 degrees today outside. And I I literally went biking like five hours ago and I'm still getting... If you are that type of person and you need to change clothes, change them. Bring a change. It does not take extra time to have a couple extra shirts. You're not going to be that sweaty, stinky guy, right? Bring deodorant in the truck. I have uh, at least one truck, uh, and at one time we had two that had deodorant in it. Each guy marked their own deodorant. They brought it in, and if they needed to freshen up, they did. Here's the thing. Senses are what people remember, right? You know what the fresh baked bread smells like. You know what grandma's house smells like or what your parents smelled like when you were little when they came home from the, the place that they worked, right? I remember that. My mom worked at a family machine shop and I remember that. Well, the same thing as people remember you being stinky. It will ruin it. It will not have them come back and they will just think you're gross. So don't be stinky. If you're going to be a smoker, which I don't know why anybody's a smoker these days, but sure, uh, if you are, awesome. Don't do that right before your jobs. Guys want to smoke between jobs, between the trucks, but guess what? You're going to smell like that as soon as your first impression. After you smoke that cigarette, you're going to talk to them, hey, uh, it's Jersey with XYZ. They're instantly going to smell that. Just try your darndest not to be um, stinky. Don't be the stinky guy. Uh, Don't have, this is the second one in this category of awfulness, a dumpster truck. We talked about that. If you have a dumpster truck, 30,000 pounds of paper on your dashboard, foam cups and food containers and everything else, you open your squeaky door and crap falls out, that's gross. I'm not letting you in my house. That's what your your vehicle looks like, and you're here to clean my stuff. Uh, it's not gonna work. I that will ruin you if you just your appearance in general, uh, even in what you drive, is gross. You are a cleaning company. If you're watching this, more than likely you're doing uh, pressure cleaning or window cleaning or roof cleaning or gutter cleaning. Right? You're a cleaning company, so you have to be kind of clean. Keep your trucks up, clean them out at the end of the day. They don't have to be super detailed inside, but they do need to not look like a dumpster. Don't have a dumpster truck. Uh, The third one in this category of awfulness is spitting and swearing. This, This goes without saying also. I get it. But here's the thing. On our cruise, we have an out guy and an in guy. There's always an out guy and an in guy. 
right? If it's hot, if it's cold, if it's whatever, there's an Alka and an in guy. And the Alka is always uh, rougher on the edges than the inside guy, right? But if you are outside swearing on the phone, if you're doing whatever, and you're hacking loogies, and you're just being gross, they can hear that through the windows. They don't live in a fortress, man. They can, they'll hear you being just as gross outside. Uh, don't do that. Swearing and spitting and everything else that you shouldn't do, just be respectful on a customer's property. I'm telling you, I've won contracts and I've made a lot of nice money uh, winning those from people who are gross. So don't be gross. It goes without saying, I know. But, but don't be gross. The third category that I have is not being reliable. Now, this also is one that uh, it's a fine line, right? Everybody needs to kind of be reliable, but they need to at least have the appearance of reliability. Now, here's a big trick for that. When you say the appointment is blah, always do an hour window because it's a very good possibility. If you say, we'll be there at 9 The next job, we'll be there at 12. The next job, we'll be there at 3. There's a very good possibility you're not going to be there at those times because you've got traffic, you'll have a talker, you'll have a job that you got into that was rough. You'll have lots of different things. So don't tell them that. Give them an hour. Hey, we'll be there Tuesday morning between 8 and 9. We'll be there Tuesday afternoon between 12 and 1 or however it lays out. Give them an hour uh, window. Now, You have to respect people's time. That's the big reason that being reliable or unreliable will kill a business. Here's the thing. If somebody is going to be there, yes, there's people who work from home, but a lot of times people will take off work and try to be there to make sure that you're there. I know sometimes people aren't there in general, right? But if you're reliable, then you are not wasting their time and you respect their time. That's a big one. First one in this category is missing whole days. Now, I know guys, it was like, I just didn't feel good today. So I just, it's the whole day. Oh, we'll, get, we'll get to it tomorrow, especially on route, like the route stuff. Guys will be like, ah, you know, it's nice about route is you don't have to go that day. Man, that is the wrong way to run your business. If you're there every Monday, be there every Monday, right? Because guess what? When the next guy comes in, they know, oh, they, uh, our window cleaner comes on Mondays. They know that. Right? You've built rapport because they always see you. You're reliable. You're like the post office. You're there when you say you're there. And I know you people out there have won bids, contracts, uh, jobs. You've gotten storefronts from somebody who doesn't know where their window cleaner is. Uh, hey, you know, do you have a window? We have a window cleaner, but I haven't seen him in a while. I don't know when he shows up. He's here sometimes. He's not here. Be reliable and you won't be that guy. You won't lose your jobs. It's just kind of goes without saying really um excessive rescheduling now everybody has a need to reschedule that just happens right if your kids are sick or if you're a one-man show and you pull your back out or you do that is uh completely doable if it's raining out this is a big one too i get a lot of stuff on this i work in the rain i don't so high five to you you get a medal i don't work in the rain so i'm going to reschedule i just do right if it's raining heavy. So without excessively rescheduling, that's what we do. Now, here's the thing on a rain day. We don't go, up. Oh, it's going to rain today, cancel the whole day. What we do is within an hour or two of the job and it starts raining, that's when we're calling, hey, sorry. And they go, oh, it's raining, right? It is. You know, oh, I knew you guys are going to, hey, I'm so sorry about this, but we'll fit you in the first available spot. We can fit you in next Tuesday, whatever, blah, 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 right? Making up making it appear even if it is that you are doing everything you can to get those people still handled that's awesome now you people that are out there like uh craig i think you just said this you're like booking out like months and months and months and months your months and months and months now if you are that i think that's an awful way to go uh only for the fact hear me out Is that if there is some rescheduling issue, if you do try to put them in, you're putting them in so far down that it's kind of a slap in the face. So keep that in mind when you go to, hey, maybe it's time to hire. But excessive rescheduling, nobody likes that. Again, if they're getting off of work, if you give them enough time, they can maybe not leave work that time. Uh, Don't schedule a whole day because guess what? A lot of times, a storm will come in, the sun will come right out, and then now these people are sitting there looking at the bright, sunny day with blue skies going these guys canceled today just don't excessively reschedule it makes you just appear not reliable 
Another, and the last in this category, the big one, is leaving before you're done. Now, lunches should be done in the truck on the way to jobs. Make it happen, but it should not be done halfway through a job. Now, if you have a giant all-day job, I get it. Then it's time maybe to do a lunch, right? Because there's no other time to do that. You need to be kind of on that and think. Bring it with you. Do it in the truck and make it quick. Make it respectful respectful, and get kind of back on there. If you just leave halfway through because you need to use the bathroom or because something else came up or, hey, uh, I forgot some tool. I got to come. That looks horrible. It's, again, disrespecting their time. If you leave for an hour and come back, they just sat around for an hour while nothing was getting done. So don't be disrespectful in their time and be reliable. That will help you not lose uh, accounts. And the fourth, because I'm not going to the fifth because that's what Luke did. But the fourth one's shoddy work. Now, don't do crap work. We get it, right? But that's not what I'm necessarily talking about. What I'm talking about with shoddy work category and losing work uh, jobs and destroying your business is something like always getting callbacks. If you are always getting callbacks or your guys are always getting callbacks, they're being lazy. You should have two callbacks a year. One should be garbage. It should just be some jerk who's going to call you back anyway, even if it's a great job or it's a bad job. The second one could be real because it can happen. You can miss a bathroom window or something that you didn't quite see. I get it. But if you're getting a ton of callbacks, you have an issue. Take care of it because if you have to get called back, people had to take it out of their time to be so angry that they had to make another phone call to get you back there to do something you should have done in the first place. So don't go out there and get excessive callbacks. It pisses people off. Uh, Also, purposely missing the hard stuff. Now, I've had guys uh, that have worked with me that called it blanching. And they'd get to a job and go, ah, that window up there, man, that, that is actually inside the crawl space or the attic space there. Uh, we're not going to do that. We're going to blanch that one. Don't skip the hard stuff. Because if you skip the hard stuff and someone sees that you skipped it, they assume you skipped a bunch of stuff. They don't assume, well, that was the hardest window. I see why they didn't do that. They probably did all the other ones perfectly. They didn't. They're automatically assuming you skipped a bunch of stuff. Don't do that. Right? Yes, it's a pain in the butt, but when you go and do your bidding, you should already have bid for that. And if that's going to ruin your day by spending a couple extra minutes on that particular window or particular piece of concrete or whatever, you bid it wrong. You need to have a little cushion there. So don't skip the hard stuff because they assume you skip the easy stuff too. The third and final one in that category of shoddy work is obviously shitty workmanship now i get it we we kind of sometimes we rush we get it through and something happens or we got employees we can't keep but if you're doing work then the corner of your window there's swoosh mark every corner is dirty all the way through you rushed it you look like you rushed it and that person will not ever call you back because you know what it wasn't an accidental drip which can happen it was obviously crappy workmanship and if you did crappy workmanship again you don't you're not paying them the respect for their time the job the money the anything a they're not even going to call you back to fix it they're just never going to call you again they're going to tell everybody oh gosh xyz oh don't hire them man they did a crap every single one of my windows was garbage they did such a bad job right here's the thing what people say is that if you do something great they tell three people if you do something bad they tell seven So go out there and do good things, not bad things, because it's going to destroy your business. We're all on the upward path trying to kind of get our businesses where we want them to be. Even if you're a sole proprietor, kind of single uh, owner operator, you still have a vision for your business. Don't lose sight of that and don't cut corners and just don't run your business into the ground. Anyway, that's it for me this week. Hey, guys, I always really do appreciate you um, checking us out. Uh, If you are listening, share this content out. I really, really appreciate you sharing out the content that means the world to me. Um, If you need supplies, I am 100% absolutely true. You are never, ever, ever bothering me if you call me. If you call me, you get 5% off if you say... The word shot. Oh, no, no. Let's be. Let's do a different one. Let's do stinky. Yeah, that's it. This week's word, 
is stinky and i will give you five percent off just because i know you listen to the podcast my number again is 862-312-2026 text me call me vox me facebook message me smoke signals email joshua window cleaning resource.com whatever you need to do do it and uh that's how i get credit so i genuinely appreciate it uh go ahead and comment down below and you will be a potential winner for next week go out there and be epic do the things don't run your business in the ground and i really do appreciate everything you guys do for me so thank you very much and until next week